start with your nozzle in and inflate it as you would for a dog balloon. Something to keep in mind when twisting balloons is a lot of times I see people wrestling with the balloons trying to twist a balloon, but the easiest way is to actually pinch and then twist. Whether you do it with your left hand or your right hand, it always makes it easier to pinch and then twist. We're going to make what's called a basic twist. So we're gonna make this about three inches long. So at this point, you're going to pinch right here and then twist. Now, something that uh, you have to realize is if I let go of my left hand right now, see it comes undone. So the key is that you pinch, you twist, now watch my left hand, it reaches over, it creeps over, and it grabs. And that way, this first basic twist doesn't come undone. Now you're gonna have to make another twist, a smaller one right about here of about an inch. So with my right hand, I'm gonna pinch and twist. Remember to bring your left hand over and grab. Now, pinch again. We're gonna make another one that matches this one. So pinch and twist. Should have something that looks like this. Notice at this point that I can hold here and hold here and it doesn't come undone. Fold it in half and then take your left hand and grab both of these two sections. Now, we're gonna make what's called a lock twist. You're gonna take your right hand and you're going to twist it just like this, just as you would on a peanut butter jar lid. So grab and twist. And you've made the head. Now we're going to make a rather short head or first basic twist here, maybe two inches. The next two twists, basic twists that you would make for ears we're gonna, are gonna be very small, about an inch. Now watch my hand move over, hold, and twist to match. Fold as you normally would, and now twist for your lock twist. Head of a giraffe. Now of course, the next basic twist will form the neck and it's a long neck. So you can make it as long as you like. I'm going over a foot here. Now we're going to make front legs. And giraffes have long legs, so we're going to be very generous here, about eight inches. Now something I like to do is make a small body and then with the back legs, make them slightly shorter than the legs here as a giraffe would. So you get kind of that angled body. So let me show you how to do that. Maybe about three inches for the body. Now for the legs, just a tad shorter here than the ones in the front. And there you have a giraffe. Of course, what really makes a giraffe if you add the markings. So first of all, I'm using a uh, raceable markers. Somebody told me early on to use erasable markers because they don't tend to pop the balloons. I don't know if that's true. I have certainly used the Sharpie marker on there, uh, but I like the uh, blunt tips as opposed to using something with a very fine point. So just keep in mind you can experiment, but I've always used the erasable markers with a blunt tip that allows me to get a generous kind of marking on the uh, balloon animal. And it adhere adheres quite well. Another thing you'll notice is that I didn't actually fill in the markings. I think that all you have to do is make the shapes on the giraffe and kids will love it. Um, if you have time, you can fill these in, but I learned early on that I didn't want to have to fill them in. In a production line, when you've got a whole bunch of people waiting, all you have to do is create the outlines on your giraffe and people are quite happy and only do that if you have the time. Otherwise, just hand out the giraffe with its long neck, without the markings, and I think your audience will be very happy. Mm -hmm.